While the lightsaber duels from the Star Wars movies are very fun to rank, today I'll be looking at the Clone Wars to see what the best and worst fight scenes are, including some that you probably forgot ever happened. Also, I'll look at a few Rebels duels to see if they are as good as their predecessors, and at the same time, I'm going to be joined by the fellow YouTuber, that Star Wars guy, who himself loves to rank obscure Star Wars aspects. Hello there. At 34 is Ahsoka Tano vs General Grievous on Rusan. So the reason this one is in last is because this is as basic of a lightsaber duel as you can get. I mean it's literally just Grievous and Ahsoka hitting their lightsabers together a couple times and then that's it. The scene of Ahsoka hiding from Grievous is kinda cool, but ignoring that it's just Grievous fighting a child with a lightsaber. At 33 is Obi-Wan vs General Grievous on the Malevolence. This fight, unfortunately, has only about 5 seconds of actual lightsaber to lightsaber combat, but I put it above the last one because we get to hear Grievous say hello there to Obi-Wan. Thirty-two, Anakin and Obi-Wan vs Savage Opress on Toydaria. This is our last duel that only lasts for a few seconds, but I think Savage Opress is awesome, so I wouldn't dare put one of his duels in last. And next up at thirty-one is Ahsoka vs Kato Parasetti in the Jedi Archives. This one is pretty cool because we get to see a fight in the Jedi Archives, which is one of my favorite designs from the temple itself, but it doesn't make much sense how a bounty hunter is able to use a lightsaber so well for an extended period of time, especially when Ahsoka literally points this out at the end of the scene. You may have Madame Jocasta's shape, but not her skills. 30. Nadar Veb vs General Grievous on Vaset. While this is from the, in my opinion, classic episode Layer of Grievous, and this is undeniably a great scene, I have to be honest in saying that as a lightsaber duel, there isn't much to work with, and my boy Fish Sticks over here, or whatever his name is, he didn't put up much of a fight. Okay, just kidding, I would never disrespect my glorious brother Nadar Veb like that. Liar! 29. Obi-Wan vs Ventress on Teth All in all, this duel doesn't have very many problems. It has a unique setting with our first on-screen duel from Ventress, which is pretty dope, and I think the quote-unquote choreography is pretty satisfying, but since it's from the movie and therefore has worse animation, and nothing in this duel actually affects the story at all, it ends up at a lower spot. And in my opinion, that's the biggest problem I have with the Clone Wars duels, which undeniably aren't anything compared to the movie duels, minus a select few we'll go over later, but they just never tend to affect the characters that are in them, or the movies at all either, which makes them feel very low stakes and pointless more more often than not. 28. Mace Windu vs Talzin on Zardosa Styx This isn't much of a duel, but I must admit that seeing Mace Windu in a fight in this show, with his signature purple lightsaber fighting not just anyone, but Mother Talzin of all people, makes this very notable. Although I suppose it's not technically a lightsaber to lightsaber fight, as Talzin is using a green smoky sword thingy here instead. According to Wikipedia, its real name is an icon sword, which we also see in Ahsoka, and somehow it always ends up in the hands of someone that sucks at dueling. 27. Ahsoka vs Barriss Afi on Coruscant This is a more brutal duel from one of the best arcs of the show that is the reason for how Ahsoka finally gets taken into custody by the Jedi after her escape from false accusers on Coruscant and so it actually is important to the story, and therefore it ranks higher than the other ones we already talked about. Because while if you think about it, this knocked over the dominoes that led to Anakin's turn. Due to Ahsoka getting captured, she ends up being expelled and then welcomed back, which makes her choose to leave the Jedi Order, which builds distrust towards the Order and Anakin, which adds to his confusion during their request for him to spy on the Chancellor, which causes him, along with the dreams of Padme's death, to betray the Jedi. 
Now before we go any further, let's look over a few of those Rebels duels I was mentioning earlier. And basically with these, I feel like the ones that are actually good are all of the ones with Darth Vader. Disney, as most of the fandom is well aware, is actually really good at working with Darth Vader and they surprisingly always do a good job of making him feel threatening and like one of the most powerful characters in all of Star Wars as he should be. He's always very scary and terrifying and this show is no exception, he absolutely owns Kanan and Ezra when he fights them. Of course, the scene between Maul and Obi-Wan in the Twin Sons episode is absolutely legendary, but when it comes to any of the duels with the Inquisitors or anything like that, that's where the show starts to fall apart. But getting back on track to why you clicked on this video, at 26 is Ahsoka vs Pre Vizsla on Karlak. Although this is a quick one, it is actually well made and shows Pre Vizsla's vast knowledge of combat as he easily matches Ahsoka and her dual lightsabers with his dark saber, and also this scene ends with Ahsoka slicing his jetpack, which he must throw off before it explodes, which I thought was pretty cool. 25. Anakin vs Dooku on Naboo This is probably the first really good lightsaber fight on here, as it shows Anakin slowly getting more powerful than Dooku as the Clone Wars go on as we see him pushing Dooku back a couple of times and leaving him out of breath by the end of it, but like a duel that will be covered later in this video, this one is also unfortunately rigged by Dooku's gang of Magna Guards. You know he had to get the hooligans up here. Yo, Dad, I got you. 24. Obi-Wan vs Pre Vizsla This was the first time we ever saw Pre Vizsla or any Mandalorian in a lightsaber duel, it's also the first appearance of the Dark Saber, and showed a fairly matched duel between Kenobi and Vizsla, which only gets more interesting when Obi-Wan manages to knock the Dark Saber from Pre Vizsla's hand, which leads to him showing off his expert hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. 23. Obi-Wan vs General Grievous on Kamino this is not only a fun little duel between Obi-Wan and Grievous, which sees Grievous using his buzzsaw of death move multiple times, but also, you know how in Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, both of them have parts of the movie where it's Anakin and Padme having drama going on, while Obi-Wan's off on some wacky adventure involving the Separatists. Well, this scene basically combines that from each movie, with the location of the Kenobi fight scene in Episode 2, but with the villain of the Kenobi fight scene in Episode 3, which is a very random fact, but I just kind of realized that as I was watching that scene again, so I thought I'd point that out. 22. Obi-Wan vs General Grievous on Obi-Wan's light cruiser. This duel is a decent one between Obi-Wan and his nemesis, which has some very mid dialogue, which is why it is not that high. Body. Your place is Dooku's errand boy. 21. Anakin and Obi-Wan vs Ventress on Christophsis. This is a surprisingly good duel for Season 1, which has Ventress take on Anakin and Obi-Wan in a very fun duel, which ends with them fighting atop a falling Octubtara droid. However, I had to deduct points for when Obi-Wan calls Ventress, my sweet. My sweet. I mean, come on, bro. 20. Anakin and Obi-Wan vs Ventress on her cruiser. This one is essentially the same, but Ventress is much angrier here as her boss just fired her, and the fight goes on for longer and has a cool environment itself with an exploding capital ship that has sliding starships which our characters must leap over. I mean, if my boss fired me, I'd be pretty mad too. Except, oh wait, I am my own boss, I don't have a boss, I run my own business, so you know, I don't have to worry about that. 19. Ahsoka vs General Grievous on Florum I like this duel because Grievous pulls up with some very cool moves, including his sawing of the ground around Ahsoka, and also the choreography between the two is very personal to their styles and characters, and makes for a very powerful yet quick fight. 18. Anakin vs Count Dooku on Tatooine This is like the only scene from the movie that actually feels worthy of being in a Clone Wars movie, which should be great considering how good the show is, right? Wrong. Anyway, I actually do have nostalgia for the movie despite it not being that good, and this duel is really well done, from Sir Christopher Lee's brilliant voice acting to the Tatooine at night background, this duel feels straight out of one of the movies, and actually feels like it would have happened after Attack of the Clones, rather than in some alternate Dave Felony universe. <laughs> Hold up, 
hold up, hold up. I'm gonna give you a little breather real quick. Alright, so where were you? Ah, uh, number 17, which is the fight where Ventress attacks Ahsoka and Luminari unduly on the Tranquility Vendor. This fight here has some really good action despite the early Clone Wars animation style, but they are literally only fighting half the scene because the other half is literally just insults between the two people that are fighting. If it isn't the hairless harpy. If it isn't Skywalker's filthy, obnoxious little pet. It's hilarious. But overall, this fight is just like pretty average duel honestly, and it shouldn't be much higher. So next we have the pointy bearded man himself fighting off three invisible night sisters all while being drugged. Now honestly I would put this higher on my list, but I'm too lazy to make my own so hey, I guess 16 is fine. <laughs> anyway why I love this scene so much, it just shows how awesome my boy Dooku is here. I mean sometimes when I get out of bed I can't even brush my teeth. And my boy Dooku here is literally fighting off three invisible night sisters while being drugged all right out of bed in the morning. I probably couldn't even beat a louder doodle rolling out of bed in the morning. Like, the Night Sisters did everything they could to make this fair, but the pointiness of Dooku's beard was just way too much for them. Since that's what the Founding Fathers intended. So after this fight is the time that Yoda and Sidious fought in a dream. Despite the weirdness of this whole episode being a dream thing and all, this fight slapped harder than my mom's frying pan. Yoda bouncing around like my AirPods every time they fall out will never not be old. I also just love how this guy can barely walk, then just goes full bouncy ball mode in a second. This fight itself had good action, it was all around solid, and Palpatine also dropped a big hint that I loved. Let him die, and you can stop all that I will do. I also love when my neighbor Larry decides to hit me with a shot at- uh, Oh, I'm, I'm running out of time, so uh, let's just go to the next one. Which is number 14, East Koth versus General Grievous on the Steadfast. This fight honestly had potential to be top 10. I mean, just look at this action. This is some top tier fighting. And oh, look, East Koth might actually win. He just pushed him into the window. Oh, he has a chip. Oh, never mind. It was rigged. Well, so much for that fight and that character. And anyway, speaking of fights, I have to go throw rocks at my neighbor, Larry. I'll see y'all later. 13. Anakin versus Ventress on Kamino. This fight has some great choreography, and I just find the matchup of Anakin and Ventress to be a great one as they both are full of so much anger and resentment and a need to prove themselves that it balances very well. Also at this point, they are close to the same skill level, and it is a nice little homage to the 2003 Clone Wars micro series. 12. Savage, Opress, and Ventress vs. Dooku plus Savage Opress vs. Anakin and Obi-Wan on the Separatist Cruiser. Here we finally get the justice for Ventress as she and her apprentice Savage Opress attempt to take down Dooku on his own ship, and funny enough, Savage is Dooku's apprentice as well, or is he? And the fight between these three is nothing short of epic, and my favorite part is when Savage charges up to Anakin and Obi-Wan and just completely destroys them, although I think Dooku spams the Force Lightning ability a little too much here. 11. Ventress vs General Grievous on Dathomir The coolest thing about this duel is that we see the two apprentices of Dooku, General Grievous, and Asajj Ventress duke it out on Dathomir, which feels like fan service to a degree, but nonetheless is still a very interesting idea, however the problem is that the wrong person wins. Look. I get that Ventress is force sensitive and Palpatine had her eliminated because she's too powerful, but that doesn't change the fact that Grievous is known as a mass Jedi killer and the collector of countless lightsabers, whereas we never actually see Ventress kill a Jedi. 10. Obi-Wan and Quinlan Voss versus Cad Bane on Tuth. While this can barely count as a lightsaber fight, I think this scene has to automatically be top 10 material just because we get to see your boy, the Blue Bounty Hunter, or as the general public knows him, Cad Bane, with a lightsaber for a couple seconds. 9. Anakin versus Barriss off Eon Coruscant. This duel had very high stakes because of Ahsoka's life depending on its outcome, and it was awesome to see Anakin fighting someone through the Jedi Temple, with even the Temple Guards spawning in at one point. 8. Kit Fisto vs General Grievous on Vesek Here we have another one of my favorite Star Wars characters, that being Kit Fisto, fighting against no other than General Grievous and absolutely decking him. 
well, until Grievous plays dirty, but this just shows how underrated and powerful of a Jedi Master Kit Fisto truly was. 7. Obi-Wan and Ventress vs Maul and Savage on Redonia Originally, when writing this ranking for the video, I had this fight much, much lower, but now that I've rewatched it, you can tell they wanted to end the already incredible Season 4 of The Clone Wars on a high note. Okay, Season 4 is easily the best season in my humble opinion, but uh, the thing is, this fight has so much energy and is so fun while also dark from what Maul says to Obi-Wan about Qui-Gon. If you don't remember, go rewatch this scene. I'll have a link to all of these scenes in the description below. 6. Anakin vs Dooku on Naboo This is the Anakin vs Dooku duel, where we finally see Anakin crash out on the sky and even start to beat him at one point. In fact, I think this is the closest Anakin ever got to killing Dooku before Revenge of the Sith, because while at 5th place is Anakin and Obi-Wan vs Count Dooku on Obadiah, which takes place after the duel on Naboo from Season 4, since Dooku is fighting against Anakin and Obi-Wan, Anakin is less able to get a hit on him, and this duel is honestly crazy because in my opinion, it's the best showcase of Makashi and Dooku's mastery of lightsaber combats that we've ever seen, where he forces Obi-Wan on the offense and Anakin on the defense, going against their strengths. 4. Ahsoka vs Maul on Mandalore This scene is incredible because 1. It shows basically the two main characters of the show, that being Ahsoka and Maul, and makes them finally fight when they were always kept away from each other throughout the earlier episodes, but also the use of mo capture to record accurate movements for the models and computer creations is a very unique and honestly inspiring uh, thing here. I'm really inspired by this. It's really, it's really cool. Yeah. Three, Maul versus Pre Vizsla on Mandalore. This is the final showcase of Pre Vizsla as a Chad warrior who actually puts up quite a fight against Maul who hurts him bad in this scene too. And the tensions are very high after we've slowly seen Pre Vizsla taking over all Mandalore for only his own vision rather than the vision of him and the brothers. At the end of it, Maul gets the Darksaber and beheads Pre Vizsla, which is pretty big also. 2. Obi-Wan and Adi Gallia vs Maul and Savage The reason I put this episode above the other one with Obi-Wan, Maul, and Savage from earlier is that while the other one has more energy in some ways, I just think it's cool to see an actual significant Jedi dying in this show at some point, similar to Evan Peel's death in the Citadel arc, as it makes the Clone Wars feel more dangerous and make the events of this show actually significant. Also the part where it's Obi-Wan alone versus the brothers in that tunnel and he cuts off Savage's arm is just the cherry on top. But the moment you've all been waiting for, in first place is Maul and Savage versus Darth Sidious. This is one of the few duels that easily reaches to the levels of some of the lesser and even very good movie Star Wars duels. Somehow this is a better showcase of the power of Darth Sidious than what we see in Revenge of the Sith. This scene has heart, stakes, lots of care put into it from the creators, and emotion all over it, and the specific choreography for each character perfectly fits where they are at by this point of the story, and it's funny to see Sidious playing with his food so to speak, and also the death of Savage is quite tragic because I always thought he was even cooler than Maul growing up. How could you even say that? And another huge thanks to that Star Wars guy for joining me on this video. Definitely check out his channel if you haven't yet. I mean, he's kind of popping off right now. And like I said, he makes some very specific ranking videos that are really funny. And I don't know, they just kind of can cheer you up and be pretty entertaining at the same time. Also, he's about to hit 10K. In fact, probably has by the time this video has come out. So definitely tell him congrats on that, as that is a pretty big deal, coming from someone that just hit 10k not too long ago. But anyway, that's it for this video. That was, in fact, every Clone Wars lightsaber duel ranked. I actually wasn't expecting this video to be as fun as it was, but I did really enjoy it, and I don't know, I thought it was pretty cool to go back and look at all these duels, because as much as I kind of thought the duels in the Clone Wars weren't as good as the movie ones, there actually were some very good ones. Now for my life advice slash Christian advice of the week, 
Um, I don't know. I guess I'm supposed to have like an album of the week too. I was gonna say Good Kid, Mad City by Kendrick Lamar. I listened through that, so that's gonna be album of the week. Uh, life advice is gonna be. I don't know. I know I have Christian advice at least. So I was gonna say that like, basically, when there's something in your life, or you have a problem in your life, right? And it's like completely, it seems impossible, and you're absolutely terrified that it won't work out, and you've been praying for it again and again and again. You want it to come true again and again and again, but it doesn't seem to, and it always seems to be a problem for a really long time. Just keep believing and completely trust in God, and just keep asking and do responsible things and what you're supposed to do, and it will happen. God will come through. And I'm just, I'm just thinking back, like this week particularly, and then also months before. There's just so many things in my life where it's like, God just does it, you know? Like, like, it's one. I mean, obviously, blind faith is the whole point, and that's definitely the truth. But it's really cool when you're living your life, and like every few months, you have some huge problem or thing that you just don't see how it could possibly work out. And then God just does it. He just does it. It's like, wow. I mean, like, there's like visible proof that he's real. I don't know. Just saying. Um, so, yeah. And any more life advice, I just say maybe hang out with friends more. I think when you isolate yourself from people, you can really get lonely and just hate life. But, like, find some real friends. I mean, like, just people that are, like, more, like, just genuine, nice people. And I know when you're in high school and stuff, it's kind of like you're trying to hang out with more popular people, and that's chill. Obviously, don't hang out with someone that makes you feel insecure all the time, but generally don't care too much about what other people are thinking about who you're hanging out with, because once you get out of high school, no one's going to care anymore, and you're going to be on to your own things. But if you're never with real friends, you might not even make it out of high school. So keep that in mind. But anyway, that's it for this video. Um, check out the merch store. There's some really cool fall merch on there. This is actually not my piece. I got this it's like a Darth Vader graphic tee. It's kind of tough, bro. But uh, not my piece. But I do have an Anakin streetwear shirt, which is pretty tough. You should look at that. Um, yeah, big thanks to that Star Wars guy for stopping by. Leave a comment if you have any questions about this video or any video suggestions for future videos as well. I'm not going to make any promises because I am extremely busy, but my plan for October is to, if possible, upload a couple extra videos here and there because I do really want to start pushing out more and more content now that I'm really starting to get into a good routine and getting better editing and editors for shorts and all that stuff. I just want to push out more like long form videos if possible to keep you all entertained and give you some good advice along the way if possible. Um, yeah, I upload normal videos every Friday at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, shorts every single day. But, uh, yeah. See ya.